Lines going across prints where you don't think they should happen, breaking off nozzles in your prints, and Elegoo is now apparently making engravers. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 132. This one hurts a lot of nozzles. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you are new here and you're struggling with getting your 3D printers printing with purpose, you can reach out to us. Links are on the screen, or you can email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. If you tag us in those socials, you know, hey, use the hashtag printfix. It helps us find the stuff just that little bit easier. We want to help you. It's what we love to do, and we don't charge a dime for it. Well, we got some interesting ones for you today, including Joel Telling's, uh, let's go with challenges, with his Orange Storm Giga, and Uncle Jesse, who had a challenge. It's just a different one. We're going to get to those in just a little bit. We're going to start with why these lines are so thick. It's not about thick lines in this one. So we can see what are some scarring going across the print. This is travel moves. So we've got a nice gold silk, good gold silk too. That's a nice color. And it looks like we've used monotonic lines to get the pattern in the exact same direction every single time. Great. That's what we want to see. But, but we can see we've got some damage issues here with the actual nozzle dragging across the print. In a case like this, there are a few ways to deal with it. The main one for me is just to add Z-Hop, right? Z-Hop will bring the nozzle up away from the print, move it over, and then go back down. So the scarring that we see from the nozzle dragging across your print disappears. You could look at adding in combing. Combing is where instead of going across perimeters, it will go around the perimeters. It will add some time and does generally reduce your print quality because your printer is likely to have some sort of blobbing and stuff as it is moving around. So in my opinion, a little bit of Z-Hop gets the job done. It does suck because there's not a great way to fix it if you don't exactly know. Here in the comments, we see the only retract when crossing perimeters is enabled to disable it. Then Kira, they believe it's called combing. That is not the same thing. It would be uh, avoid crossing perimeters, I believe, inside of Prusa Slicer. But I get it. Combing is what you are looking for, which is, hey, don't cross the perimeters. Just go around everything. And we can see the only thing I've heard about these lines involving adjusting retraction and Z-Hop to get rid of them. But that didn't work. What's causing these? How do I prevent them in the future? More Z-Hop. Often, if you are still dragging across your print, you've still got a Z-Hop thing. I would say that you might be over extruding, but often a slight amount of over extruding is great for silk filament. It tends to give that really nice shiny top surface when you do that. Why? I have no freaking clue. Those that might understand that a little bit better can let me know in the comments. But personally, I don't know, man. I just slightly over extrude the silks and they come out looking much better. It's magic sometimes, to be honest. Unfortunately, the answer of enabling ironing is likely not going to solve this and in fact is going to only exacerbate the issue. Try to avoid ironing when you're working with silk filament. Silk filament doesn't like staying very hot for very long. And ironing is a very, very thin layer that is done very, very slowly. And it will have a tendency to just turn it completely matte appearing rather than shiny. I actually think as far as surface finishes go, they've got it down pretty darn well. We just have to deal with that scarring that is occurring. So more Z-Hop. Broke off the nozzle. Oh no. Oh, and it's at the heat break. Oh, and I can see the thermistor wires. That's fun. This comes from the Elegoo subreddit. They went to unscrew the nozzle and the nozzle broke off. So what they likely did here is that they went to just unscrew it without applying any back pressure. So if you're going to unscrew a nozzle, you also have to hold on to the block because if not, you're going to start unscrewing your actual heat break. And in this particular case, everything probably wasn't hot enough. And the heat break said, absolutely not. See you later, nerd. And uh, now it's gone. But in a case like this, man, just replace it. Just go ahead and replace the entire hot end. They're not very expensive. They are literally like $22 on Amazon. Hey, we'll link to some in the description if you see this video and you want to pick some up and support the channel while you're at it because those affiliate links help us afford the things like food for the editors. I, I think they like food, right? Editors, you, you, you guys like food, right?
But if you do want to support our efforts to make sure that Victoria is also well fed, you can support us via the links in the description down below, where you can join our Patreon, PayPal, YouTube channel members, and at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out with the awesome crew in our private Discord server, where we hang out pretty much every single night. We're going to start uh, either a movie night or gaming nights or something like that soon, so if those things you want to join in on and hang out and enjoy and hell even live watch our videos early and hey react to other people's videos too come and join the fun but this one man for for 20 bucks it ain't worth messing around with you're gonna need a new thermistor you're gonna need maybe new heater you're gonna definitely need to extract that heat break out and it looks like it's a couple of grub screws might drop that out but inside of the heat block here I don't know. The idea of a heat break in this particular instance is that it's a really thin piece of metal that keeps most of the heat down in the heat block. Some of it will naturally go up. There's nothing you can do to stop it. And the heat break makes sure that as little of it as possible goes through. That, of course, the heat sink, which in this case is right above it, gets rid of that excess heat. Unfortunately, I don't, this isn't even a warranty thing, but kudos to Elegu. They said to go ahead and get in contact with support. Absolutely here for this. I love to see when companies are interacting with users whether the users have problems or not i love seeing when companies interact with the users on social media where it's not just a marketing thing for them it's where they want to connect more with their users so a plus and whether elegu is going to take care of this person or not is kind of irrelevant i like the fact that they are at least saying hey reach out to us let's talk about it what you can do here is you can extract the parts unfortunately we did break our thermistor wires. You can kind of cheat here if you want, but if you don't know what you're doing, please don't do the cheat. And if you don't know what the cheat is, don't do it. But if you can't reconnect those wires, yeah, you're kind of done at this point. Theoretically, you would need to heat up the hot end and then unscrew the nozzle. If you have a heat gun, you could put this thing in like a bench vise, heat it up, and then unscrew the nozzle. Make sure that you take off the heater because that heater is likely salvageable. But unfortunately, that thermistor has left the building along with that heat break. The heat block might also be salvageable, but you're going to have to get the heat break out of it. If you can unscrew the nozzle, you are likely able to unscrew the heat break, assuming it is designed to actually come out. But honestly, for the cost of those hot ends, it is not worth messing with. Do note, you will need to make sure that the actual like extruders and hot end kits come with all the parts needed. It looks like they do, but I would argue that this is probably not the right one. But do note, if you are going to take a nozzle off and you're looking to replace it, it always has to be done when the printer is hot. And make sure that you have something to hold on to the heat block so that as you're unscrewing the nozzle, you're holding the heat block so it doesn't also twist. Because if it twists... This is what happens. Just make sure things are warm. And by warm, I mean really hot, right? If this is an all metal hot end, go to 280C. No problem. Go to 290C if you're comfortable with it. We try not to go above 290C because normally when you hit 300, the printer will instantly fail out and tell you thermal runaway. So 280 gives you a little bit of extra room because the pliers you likely grab on to the heat block with are going to sink away some of that heat. Also remove the heater sock when you do it. Uh, cause otherwise you're going to chew up the sock. That's 0.4 millimeter, right? Well, it was. So apparently carbon fiber is abrasive. Who knew? We've seen this. I've never seen it this bad. This one is pretty bad. I would love to know how much carbon fiber they went through. This looks like a Chidi Tech printer. It looks like it's got the same feet that Chidi Tech printers have. By the way, I just unboxed the Q1 Pro live on our channel. It hasn't happened for me in real time yet. So uh, we'll card to that video so you guys can take a look at it. I it looks like to be a decent printer, but even I don't know the price yet. Like, literally, when the price goes live for everybody, that's when I find out the price, too. So, uh, who knows what the price is going to be? Not I. Hopefully, I had a good time with it, but I guess you're going to have to watch the video to find it out because even I don't know yet. This is a bit of a problem. So, if you are going to run any abrasives, and that includes glow in the dark. Because the strontium aluminate that they use is much harder than brass to get that glowing effect. You will want to use a hardened steel nozzle. The easy way to tell if it is a hardened steel nozzle is if it is black. Normally, hardened steel nozzles are black because it's steel, it's been hardened, and when you harden steel, it tends to go dark. I haven't yet seen companies try to pass off a brass nozzle as hardened steel, so that's good. 
do not buy stainless steel. It will not work for the stainless steel. It's more for food printing. And if you don't understand food safety stuff, don't even go down that path because 3D printing is not food safe, at least FDM. I don't care if your raw materials are, your nozzles are brass, your gears are brass, and all of that has lead in it. Sorry. Anyways, if you use a hardened steel nozzle or like a tungsten carbide nozzle, or even a diamond nozzle, that will keep this wear and tear at bay. This is not something that happened overnight. It honestly looks like they took like a bench grinder or something to it, but you would have to be printing a lot of carbon fiber to get something to look this bad in any reasonable amount of time. I like the top comment. That's more like four millimeter. 0.4 is a pinhole, really, really tiny. The difference a decimal can make. And that reminds me, we got some nozzles in from Diamondback to do destructive testing with, because we love their diamond nozzles. In fact, they've been a sponsor of the channel a while back there, and it was great to have them. And we're going to be seeing them at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. So maybe they got some cool stuff for us to check out. Maybe those are things that we can also show you. Maybe they're things we can't show you. We're going to find out. But they did send us some B stock nozzles, just nozzles that don't pass the test for what they would want to sell to a consumer. So I think we should do a, uh, a torture test here on the channel. So let me know what you guys want to see because my ideas are currently in the die grinder, blow torch. I don't want to use a hammer because it's just going to shatter the polycrystalline diamond, but I want to heat the ever loving bejesus out of it and see how it reacts and just hit it with a die grinder because theoretically the actual grinding material, like the grinder that you use should get damaged and not the nozzle itself. I've always wanted to try it. We've been meaning to do a live stream on it. So if you guys want to see us torture test diamond nozzles, let me know down in those comments and what you want to see us do to those nozzles because I would love to get some ideas from you all of how we can look at abusing these things and testing just how good a hundred dollar nozzle is. We like them. They've worked well for us, but we don't tend to slam nozzles into things. So let me know what you want us to try got B stock nozzles and I was told to give them hell. Next up, the tale of two Orange Storm Gigas. We have Joel's Orange Storm Giga here and we have Uncle Jesse's here with a nice little photo. Both Uncle Jesse and the 3D printing nerd Joel Telling here got the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga, a 3D printer that I expect to sell for very cheap on Facebook Marketplace and people realize how actually big a 3D printer with an 800 by 800 by 1000 millimeter build volume is and the fact that you have to build it in situ. It is too big to fit through a standard door. For those that didn't watch Joel Telling stream, Joel is like six foot five. He's massive in terms of like regular people scale. I look up when I talk to Joel. Joel is a very tall person and this machine makes him look tiny. This machine is huge. And as far as consumer grade large FDM printing goes, the Orange Storm Giga is quite literally the most affordable one on the market. It looks like retail is going to be somewhere in the $2,500 range, but Kickstarter had them all the way down to like $1,200 to $1,500. And so you get a lot of bang for that buck. Unfortunately for Joel, it was a little more bang than he was expecting. Let's take a watch. Are you kidding me? All right. I, apparently, apparently, setting that Z offset did Jack Bupkiss. Cool. It's just, I don't care anymore. I understand this frustration so much. I have rage quit streams before where it's like, ah, nothing is working. And you just want, you just want to just throw, flip the entire table, throw everything and say, F it, I'm out. One of our Discord members had a great way to describe myself and Joel. This is from member Devoid Colossus. He said, it is the difference between a grade school teacher, Joel, and a college professor, Grant. One tries to keep a happy face while the other hits a cigarette and proceeds to explain that is and here's how to fix it. Okay, 
Joel is certainly more than just a elementary school teacher. I am certainly less than a collegiate level professor. Okay, let's let's be real clear. I'm not the 3D printing professor. That's an actual channel. We'll we'll, we'll link to him so you can go subscribe to the 3D printing professor. But this sucks. I feel so bad for Joel for this because like this is so much work and a lot of like heavy marketing for. Elegoo, regardless of whether or not he was paid to do this, there's marketing that's occurring here with over 35,000 people viewing it and it happening about a, a week ago. This sucks. Like, this is crap. <laughs> I I did everything I was supposed to. I understand and now so much. I've got deep gouges in my PEI sheet. I followed the directions precisely and it murdered itself. Cool. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I know that Joel has issues with machines that don't work right. Uh, Ender 7 flashback where he took an angle grinder with a grinding disc and actually cut part of the machine off. Um, I'm not certain if that's why the Prusa XL has its design the way that it does where there's no front crossbar, but we can't say there's no reason that it didn't occur. We can't say it's definitely not because of Joel taking angle grinders to printers, but Look, I get this, and I wish there was a better way to do this. This is something that happens to all of us, where we put so much time and effort and energy into it. And some people were, like, kind of making fun of Joel. And, and I, I can't I can't get on board with that. Joel's such a nice guy, and he means so well. And you could just tell he is doing everything in his power not to just raise the middle finger, drop enough F-bombs to get canceled, and then walk off. And I think Joel handled it really, really well. I certainly would have been cursing and, and, and been real pissed off at this. But I feel it. I, I feel it when this kind of stuff happens because this is your job. And when things don't go right and you follow the instructions perfectly, it sucks to hear it. Joel, however, was not alone. Uncle Jesse had a bit of a problem. See, what you're looking at here is a cable. What you're looking at here is where that cable is supposed to go. See, the problem is that the cable is underneath this piece. We're gonna use Joel's printer to give you an idea. That cable is somewhere right around there, if I'm correct. It might be on the other side, but it's on one of the two sides. That means that Uncle Jesse has to pull all of this apart to get that little cable out to connect to that stepper motor. It's just a bad design. There's no reason that that should not be forced to not be in that area. Also, um, Uncle Jesse, how, how's your how's your head doing? How's your head doing there, buddy? Now, that's not the best gift that we have of Uncle Jesse, of course. Those that know, you know this one. Everybody okay. knows this one. Buddy, I, I hope your head's feeling better. It seems like these Orange Storm Gigas are a little bit mad about being in the world. Thankfully, it looks like both of these are going to be resolved. Elegu's going to take care of Joel. And because it is actually four build plates and not just one big one, it is actually relatively simple to fix this problem that Joel has because it's all on one build plate rather than, you know, across uh, all four of them. So technically, it's not that big of an expense. But I completely understand the frustration. And Uncle Jesse, hope the back of your head is feeling better, brother. My, my head hurts just thinking about that. And before you say it, it's not because I'm thinking. It's because I know what it's like to get your head smacked by a 3D printer. Ow, son of a bitch. But you know what doesn't smack me in the head, at least most of the time? is all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you guys do in making these videos possible. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts, links are down below. And hey, five bucks or more gets your name in lights. Ten bucks or more gets you to come hang out with us in our private Discord server. But hey, don't forget to leave a like, get subscribed if you think we've earned it. And stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Enjoy the videos below me. I think you're going to like them. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Encoding overload, turn down video settings. How about you go f yourself? Uh, Supplemental audio in a very quiet room.
use it if you want.